Over four years ago, I already made my top 10 favourite Marathon 8 tracks, but that was over four years ago, so yeah, I'm kind of desperate to remake it, but for more reasons than one to be fair. See, not only do I think I can make the subject into a much better video now, but some of my opinions have also changed slightly, which is something I'm sure you could also put together, given that we're here. And so, with that out of the way, and because I'm excited to talk about Mario Kart again, let's get to my top 10 favourite Mario Kart 8 tracks, Free Deluxe. <laughs> Get it? It's like Redux, but Redux because Mario Kart Deluxe is a remake of. It. All right, let's let's just go on with it. Have you ever imagined what it'd be like if Mario Kart took place in the Zelda universe? No, you haven't. Well, we have an answer to that anyway, in the form of Hyrule Circuit. Released alongside Link as a part of the first wave of DLC for Mario Kart 8 in 2014, Hyrule Circuit is the long-awaited answer to the aforementioned question we had just. In terms of its design, it's pretty much a love letter to the Zelda series, with all kinds of easter eggs and references to said series scattered throughout. For example, instead of coins being present on the track, there are rupees instead. Rupees, of course, being the form of currency in the Legend of Zelda series, and they also make the rupee pickup sound effect when you do pick them up, which is just really neat. And as for the main attraction, the Master Sword is also present, located inside the Hyrule Castle section of the track, where if you hit the three anti grass speed boost objects, I don't actually know their name, on the way into the castle, you can open a shortcut through the Master Sword, which even makes the iconic Zelda jingle when you hit it. Again, pretty neat. Otherwise, the track is pretty simple in terms of the overall design, but not everything needs to be overly complex, you know. Sometimes, less is more, and Hyrule Circuit is pretty great in front of race on despite that, especially so thanks to the awesome remakes of the main Zelda theme that plays as the track's music. It's genuinely really good. You might think it's odd to place Shy Guy Falls ahead of Hyrule Circuit, given all the praise I just threw at the latter, but I just really like Shy Guy Falls, alright? Well anyway, Shy Guy Falls is one of the earlier tracks in Mario Kart 8 slash Deluxe, being the final track in the Flower Cup, but even so, in my opinion, it's super fun to race on, but that may be because I'm a huge fan of waterfalls in real life, so yeah, maybe there's some bias at play here. But my bias for falling water aside, why else do I like this track, or even prefer it over Hyrule Circuit? Well, the music's awesome. Yeah, I'm serious. I put Shy Guy Falls ahead of Hyrule Circuit solely because of the music. Hey. Good music will do that to me, okay? Really, the song by itself is pretty great, super catchy, but the part that makes it for me is when the Shy Guys kick in with their Shy Guy noises for the chorus and such, or just whenever you're driving past and mining what appears to be diamonds. It's cute. Waterfalls and Shy Guys? It's a wonder this track isn't number one. <laughs> Onto another track that appears super early on in the game. One Bruins appears as the final track in the Mushroom Cup, and one track to finish off what is, essentially, the tutorial of the game. From Bruins is a simple but cool track in my opinion. Not only is it the location that Fromps, a more mysterious enemy in the Mario Kart live, or used to live given that the Ruins is in the title, which by definition states the physical destruction or disintegration of something or the state of disintegrating or being destroyed, which is pretty intriguing, the track itself is just a blast to race on honestly. Though that may be because of the music again, which is an absolute bomb. I'm serious, the From Bruins theme is generally so good that I could listen to it for hours on repeat, which is not something I tend to do with a lot of music honestly. The only question now is when do we get Fromp as a playable character in Mario Kart? I mean, hey, come on. If the Goomba can hold and swing about in Mario Super Sluggers, then who's to say an otherwise sentient rock can't drive a go-kart? Can't be that difficult to make work, right? I believe I had Wildwoods a bit higher up on the list when I made this 4 years ago. In fact, yes, I did, at number 9 to be exact. So if it now up to number 7, what's changed? Well, to be frank, not a whole lot really. Everything I said about Wildwoods in the old version of the list still applies here and a little more. Wildwoods consists of 3 key segments. 1. You're racing up a tree in anti-gravity. 2. You're then making your way through the tree itself where a bunch of shy guys are living inside. And 3. 
you're led out of the tree by a waterway into a pond and then back up to the tree to finish the lap. The design of the track feels like a mini adventure in a sense, and you just know I'm a sucker for that waterway. I'm sorry, everything that has some kind of water feature or whatever I just adore, water could be so pretty. Plus, Wild Woods is its overall a really pretty looking track. I mean, granted, every part of Mario 8 slash Deluxe looks amazing, but more so here I feel, kind of like with Shy Guy Falls, but instead of just one aspect, e.g. the waterfalls, here, it's the whole thing. The music is pretty good too, but it's not something I find myself listening to that often, unlike the previous entries or later entries on this list. Electrodrome, which I probably spelled wrong, hang on. Nope, I've got it right, okay. So Electrodrome is the third track in the Star Cup Grand Prix, and damn, what I've got to be a part of, hits all around. Well, almost, but that's irrelevant. That side, Electrodrome is a very visually stunning track in terms of aesthetic. Basically, Electrodrome is set in a nightclub, with neon lights flashing about and raving enemies like Cooper Group and Brown Plants. It's one hell of a party. Admittedly, it's a little difficult for me to detail what's going on. But from the gameplay I've put in the background, I'm sure you can get an idea of how cool this track is. Plus, as you would expect from such a track, the music is insanely good too, which is just a cherry on top, I feel. From one Star Cup track to another, and it certainly will not be the last one appearing on this list, we have Dolphin Shoals, and damn, this track is so pretty. Like, Rattle right the Gate, I think Dolphin Shoals is the prettiest looking track in Mario Kart 8. Of all claim, I realise, given how Mario Kart 8 slash Deluxe looks absolutely stunning overall, but it's just my opinion, so take that with a pinch of salt. So anyway, Dolphin Shoals has you spend a lot of time racing underwater, with only one segment having you race on land, even then, with anti-gravity. One of the best parts of the course, in my opinion, has to be the segment where you're racing through an underwater cavern using pipes blowing up water bubbles to keep yourself from falling into the abyss, only to be met with a huge Unagi, which you can trip boost off if you can get on top of, and it's super fun to chain as many together as you can while you're on it. It should also be mentioned that there's a segment towards the beginning where you're jumping through gold hoots with dolphins, and that alone is merit enough for being both cute and fun. Music-wise, it's very fitting. Now, you're mostly listening to it while underwater, so the slight reverb could be a make or break for some people, but personally, I don't mind it. I still think it sounds good either way. It's very upbeat and just nice on the ears. Cloud Top Tr Cruise is the first track in the Special Cup, and while I don't think much of the rest of the tracks in that cup, I can at least say it starts off on a super high note. Cloud Top Cruise is essentially what the name suggests. It's a cruise through the cloud tops. Okay, well, no, not exactly. Seeing as cruise suggests you're driving at a, at a leisurely speed and you're travelling smoothly, while a track has you traverse a giant thundering storm cloud at one point, but that's besides the point here. Honestly, I don't have too much to say about Cloud Top Cruise. I mean, it's definitely a fun track to race on though, and given it's slightly more condensed design, things can get pretty chaotic on the track, so that's always fun. And sure, I've avoided it for long enough now, but a portion of Cloud Top Cruise's theme is Sky Station Galaxy's theme from Super Galaxy 2, which is a very beloved piece of music from the Galaxy games. And safe to say, it's awesome here too. Also, for a bit of extra trivia, while researching for this particular entry, I found out that Cloud Top Cruise is, is apparently an adaptation of the Sky Garden track that appeared in Mario Kart Super Circuit and Mario Kart DS as a retro track. So, yeah, that's kinda cool, I'm not gonna lie. Just regarding the fact that it has a name that is as straightforward as naming your dog Doggo or something similar, Animal Crossing is just a really pleasant track. Its approach to, des to design is similar to Hyrule Circuit, in that there are easter eggs and references to their respective series all throughout the track. But I'd say Animal Crossing does a better job of it. Much like with Hyrule Circuit, instead of coins, you're picking up the series' perspective currency, in this case, being bells. Plus, there are also fruit trees that you can bump into to make fruit fall from them, and if you run into the fruit, you'll get a speed boost that's akin to a normal mushroom speed boost. So there's an element of strategy present, which is something I never expected to say about anything regarding Animal Crossing, but here we are. There are other little details scattered around the track too, of course, mostly in the form of familiar characters on the outside such as KK Slider, Rossetti, and Timmy and Tommy. But there are also more subtle ones, such as the Nukes Crannies theme from the original Animal Crossing plane where you drive up to it, or Snowboys replacing the set as the track hazard in the winter version of course. And speaking of winter, there are actually four different versions of Animal Crossing, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Really, they're just simple reskins of the track to match the season, 
but I think it's really nice that you can get to choose what version of the track you want. Usually, the season will be random, but if you're manually selecting the course, you can hold L for Spring, R for Summer, ZL for Autumn, or ZR for Winter, according to the Easter egg honestly. And those are actually reverse for mirror modes, R instead of L for example, so that's even cooler of a detail. Animal Crossing is just such a huge love letter to Animal Crossing fans, and as one at the time of the track's release in the Animal Crossing Cross Mario Kart pack in 2015, you can be damn sure I fell in love with it immediately. Well, this one may be a shock to you, or it might not be, it depends on whether you really care or not, but it was a shock for me at least, as Mount Wire being placed at number 2 was actually a spur of the moment decision when I realised I liked the final track more, but let's just go on with it. Mount Wario, besides being something I don't particularly want to do, is a continuous lap course, meaning instead of three laps of the same course, it's just one long lap that's split into three sections. Quite a few courses in the series do this, with it having started with Woohoo Island and Woohoo Mountain in Mount 7, and then returning here. Mount Wario feels like an adventure. Simply put, you start at the top of the mountain, and you race your way down to the bottom. Along the way, you'll race through an ice cavern, a dam, a snow forest, and then you'll finish off by racing down a ski slalom and it's so fun the whole way through. Mount Warrior is more reminiscent of Woohoo Mountain than Islands because of how it doesn't loop back on itself. I think that works in its favour. Makes it feel more special, you know? Mount Warrior is always fun to play on for me, no matter how many times I've played it before, which is the mark of a good track design, I feel. Heh, <laughs> and to think, it's only a part of the Star Cup too, and not something like the Special Cup. And so, here we are. If it wasn't obvious, Big Blue is based on the long dormant F-Zero series, I'm so sorry F-Zero fans, much like Mute City, which was released with the first wave of DLC, but far, far outshines it in terms of quality. Big Blue follows the continuous lap approach of other courses in the game, like N64 Red Road and Warriors Mountain, as we mentioned previously. It always seems like the best Mario Kart tracks have this design approach, where it's just one continuous lap, which is a damn shame because they're always so good, but I'm getting sidetracked here, so back on top. Being an F-Zero feed track, you can imagine that Big Blue is such an insanely exhilarating track to race on. And to 200cc, you can bet your ass it is. Seriously, if you're going to choose this track at all, which, why wouldn't you, play it on 200cc. That's truly the best way to experience it. And what a coincidence that it was that 200cc was added around the same time as Big Blue. It's almost like Nintendo loves teasing F-Zero fans, huh? As you would expect, the entire track takes place under anti-gravity, much like Mew City, which makes it even better because under anti-gravity, you can bump into opponents to get a boost off them. And on a track like Big Blue and in 200cc, it just makes everything that much more fun. It's just one huge downhill adventure with all sorts of fun little skips you can pull off come the water slides and overall. The track is just such a blast to play on, and I'm not gonna lie, it kinda makes me want a new F0 game, despite never having played one before. It's wild, but I'm not gonna hold my breath on that one. It does beg the question though of why Captain Falcon wasn't a DLC character, given his series has two tracks present. So it's a huge missed opportunity really. But Hey, I guess room was needed for Tanuki Mario. And we're done here. I've been wanting to remake this list for a while, as I stated at the beginning. And it was a recent Mario Kart play session I had with my family that really pushed me to finally get it done. So I'm really glad that I could. Mario Kart will always be one of my favourite series. And even though I don't generally talk about it here on this channel, that doesn't mean I don't love it, because I absolutely do. And I always will do. <laughs>